All right there, everyone. Paris is on lockdown and Emmanuel Macron is in hiding for today's protests in Paris. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. Before we do, if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. I post two videos a day analyzing current events in light of pretty awesome conservative trends. So let me encourage you to smack that bell and subscribe button. We're on the countdown, the last 10,000 on our way to 100,000 subscribers. It'll be an absolute privilege to have you as one of them. All right, so here we are in week four. This is act four in Shakespearean terms of the ongoing populist uprising in France, which of course, as we've been discussing on a number of videos, has been in the making for years now, which we'll get to in a moment here, the undercurrents behind all this. Today, Saturday, thousands of demonstrators gathered once again on the streets of Paris, where they were met with thousands of police officers and at least 12 armored vehicles. Keep in mind, the French government has not deployed armored vehicles throughout the streets of Paris since World War II. It's that serious what's going on here. French authorities really do see the Yellow Vest uprising as a mortal threat to their national security. That's partly why we're devoting so many videos to this. This really is a game changer. Now, originally, French police wearing riot gear thought they could stop and search protesters individually as they were entering the Champs-Élysées, sort of like, you know, people entering into an amusement park or something like that. But it soon became quite apparent that so many thousands of people were flowing in that there was just no way that the police could search them individually. And so... At some point, police began deploying tear gas and stun grenades after they felt threatened by the massive size of the crowd. And of course, that meant all hell broke loose, right? Obviously, the protesters responded by throwing bottles, rocks, and the like. Now, uh, one very compelling image uh, that's been captured through all of this is a video that surfaced, I believe it was on Thursday, that showed dozens of students on their knees in front of police with their hands behind their backs or behind their heads. And this is in protest of another video that surfaced earlier showing high school students being treated rather brutally by riot police who were uh, detaining them. Again, remember these protests, this yellow vest uprising completely took Macron and his government by surprise. They're completely caught off guard by all this. And so it's not surprising that they're They've responded so brutally and callously, Macron, you know, dismissing the demonstrators as a bunch of thugs and then the police treating them accordingly, right? I, I'm certainly not excusing this. I'm just saying that this is the kind of thing to expect from a Marie Antoinette-like attitude of let them eat cake. Or as one article lampoon, Macron's attitude throughout all of this has been let them drive Teslas, right? <laughs> Needless to say, the lockdown requires all shops and monuments to be closed, which they are throughout the city. This is obviously not the greatest time to be a tourist in Paris, for sure. And altogether, nearly 100,000 police have been mobilized throughout the nation, up from 65,000 last weekend, in order to try to quell this massive uprising that's been spreading out to other nations, such as Belgium and the Netherlands. Now, in the midst of all this, you might wonder... Where the heck is Emmanuel Macron? <laughs> Where is the leader of the globalist world? Where is he? I'll tell you where he is, and I'll be blunt. Macron is in a he is in a self-imposed exile. He is hiding. He's left the prime minister of France trying to take control of this whole situation. And do you know what's so significant about Macron being in hiding? being in this self-imposed exile. It is an explicit admission that the Yellow Vest uprising has ultimately nothing to do with gas taxes. It has ultimately nothing to do with this or that government policy. The Yellow Vest uprising has absolutely everything to do with Emmanuel Macron. That's what his absence from all of this signifies unequivocally. The fundamental reason for these demonstrations and protests is Macron himself. And why? Why are the people of France rebelling against Macron? Because Macron is the self-appointed leader of the globalist world order, a world order that makes no secret of its disgust for nationalism and nationalist populists, you know, the basket of deplorables. Macron is their self-anointed leader. 
which is an obvious indication that he's been living under an elitist rock for the last several years. And that's because all of the social and political and economic trajectories that have been coming out over the last few decades indicated that France was ready to blow this globalist world order completely apart. First, there's been a clear shift in political sentiments among the industrial worker base, which has traditionally been a very reliable left-wing vote in France. And France, as in many parts of Europe, particularly Germany, it's the working class and industrial class that's moving over to the nationalist populist right. Jean-Marie Le Pen, the father of Marine Le Pen, was most popular among industrial workers, the former base for socialists and communists in his presidential campaigns. And in 2017, the only demographic group that gave an overwhelming majority of support to Marine Le Pen was the working class. Secondly, there's been a massive shift in sentiments among young voters. Back in 2012, when Marine Le Pen first ran for president of France, her support among voters under the age of 25 was around 15%. When she ran again in 2017, her support from voters under the age of 25 jumped to 40% in the first round of voting, and then, uh, which she won, by the way, and then to 34% in the runoff with Macron. She more than doubled her support among this ridiculously reliable left-wing demographic in a matter of just five years. And we could break this down even further in terms of young women women between the ages of 18 and 26, which is one of the most reliable left-wing voting blocs. We've seen young women begin to move more and more towards the nationalist populist right in France. We have some very fascinating statistics between 1998, when young French women first voted for a Le Pen, in this case, Jean-Marie Le Pen, 9% of women between the ages of 18 and 26 voted for Le Pen in 1998. However, when his daughter ran for president in 2017, the percentage of French women voted between the age of 18 and 26, voted for her, were 32%. So this was a surge from 9% support for the right-wing candidate in 1998 to 32% in 2017. Again, there's no indication that this trajectory is stopped. In the next election, it may top 50%. This is a category of young Women, we're talking about one of the most reliable left-wing voting blocs around. And thirdly, in terms of French without college degrees, the percentage of support from the nationalist populist right is staggering. While college-educated French voted for Macron over Le Pen by an 83 to 17 ratio, Macron's winning margin among those who were not college-educated collapsed to just 54 over 46 ratio. So he and Le Pen uh, were almost dead even in that voting demographic. And when you combine all this with further polling that found that over 70% of French believe that their government does not care about them or their political and economic concerns, let's just say that the Yellow Vest uprising has been years in the making. More and more French citizens want nothing to do with globalism and its aristocratic elite that are seen increasingly as ruling for their own financial and political benefit as over and against the benefit of the citizens they claim to represent. Make no mistake, the Yellow Vest uprisings are just the latest events in a massive political paradigm shift that's increasingly replacing the old globalist world order with a new nationalist, populist, and traditionalist age. And so Macron's self-imposed exile turns out to be quite symbolic, doesn't it? For it foreshadows a new world where the likes of Macron and Merkel and the bullies in Brussels will no longer be found. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our new online merchandise selection where you can get gear and apparel celebrating all things nationalist and populist and a special Christmas time discount of 15% off all items by entering the promotion code below. And if you would, please click on our Patreon or PayPal link below and become a supporter of this channel. As you know, we are periodically demonetized by YouTube and we could really use your help so we can continue to analyze current events in light of amazing conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.